Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to week three of our series on my block. All this month, we are talking about compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. I have a question for you. Have you ever heard about a rescue story where someone used something completely unexpected to do something pretty amazing to help someone? Well, back in 2016, a woman in New Hampshire needed help. She had been in a car accident and her car had caught on fire. That's when a man passing by helped to rescue her by creating a fire extinguisher out of a Coke bottle. Here's the thing. We might never extinguish a car fire with a soda bottle, but we will have times in our lives when we will face situations when someone needs help. We might look at the situation and want to help, but not know where to start. It might cause us to give up, but what if we looked at that situation differently? As we jump in, think about this. What do you have that you can use to help others? Yes. Hey, you better hurry and get in on this. What is this? Miss Franklin is selling her yard. What? Yeah, she's having a yard sale. John. No, 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 no. She said she was ending her yard sale at 4 o'clock and I could come by and take whatever I wanted. She was just going to get rid of it anyway. Was there other stuff in her yard? Uh, yeah, there were like some tables in the driveway with some antiques and clothes on it. I think she was cleaning out her attic. I have never seen so many shoulder pads and gold buttons in my life. That was the stuff she was selling. Uh, no, it is called a yard sale, Brandon, where you sell your yard. Or where you sell old stuff in your yard. <laughs> you sure? Absolutely. John! It's Miss Franklin. You never saw me. <laughs> What you can! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. I'm John. You gonna join the show today or do we need to yeah. give you some more uh, time? Uh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh 
I'm trying to buy a new vacuum cleaner because, you know, there's dirt everywhere around here. No kidding. Anyway, it's impossible to know which vacuum cleaner to get. There's just so many of them. You know what I miss? What? Door-to-door -door salespeople. Oh. Yeah, they just show up at your door and they tell you exactly what you need, whether you need it or not, and you just can't say no. Actually, you can just say no. Really? Mm -hmm. uh. But anyway, I miss them. You never see them around anymore. Who's there? Just a moment of your time. I'm a door-to-door -door salesman. Yes! Please welcome someone who sells stuff. You can come in. I said you could... Never mind. <laughs> Hi. I'm Murray uh... Lohman with Door Two Doors. And have I got a deal for you. Come on in, yeah, have, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, on in. have a seat. Don't mind if I do. Right. Don't mind if I do. Uh, okay. We know who you are, so uh, tell us what do you sell? Doors are my name, selling is my game. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Except my name is actually Murray, oh. not Doors. That's just my tagline for my business. Mm -hmm. Door to Doors. Yeah. Okay. And, and what do you sell? I'm a door to door salesman. Uh huh. Yeah, no, no, we got that. But what, what do you sell? Do you sell like crazy cleaning products that wash out three-year-old raspberry jam stains or, or rags that can soak up an entire pool or, or ooh, vacuum cleaners? Because I could really use a vacuum cleaner. I'm a door-to-door -door salesman. I... Wait here. Oh. Wait here. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was... I know. It made sense. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay, so you sell... Good afternoon. I'm Murray with Door Two Doors. With our exclusive direct door-to-door -door delivery system, we replace your door with one of your neighbor's doors. So call Door Two Doors today. Wait, you sell doors? Yes! For only $25, <laughs> I will trade your door with any door from the homes in your neighborhood. Wait, 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 wait. So did you take this door from one of my neighbors? <laughs> I didn't just take it, John. I traded my front door for it. Oh. Do you like it? It's part of our Tuscan open air concept. Yeah, but Murray, this door is really old. It's vintage. Okay, but the screen is ripped and missing in some places. Open air. Uh, what if it gets cold? Build a fire. Or oh. bugs. Mm. We built our house in the bugs' home. Why shouldn't they live in ours? Oh. Okay. Um, I think that's all the time we have, right, John? Uh, that's all the time we have. Thank yeah. you, Murray. Yeah. No problemo. Yeah. I'll go ahead and get started. Oh, you'll... What? Uh, wait, 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 Murray, 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 stop, 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 please. I, there's the, the door thing, there's uh, some money. Uh, I think money's a thing. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. Oh. I'll trade you the door for $15. That's for less than the price of a cup of coffee. Where, where do you get your coffee? $10. I, 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 $5. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. $2, that's my final offer. Well, uh, oh. You can just say no. It's his final offer. John. <laughs> Open air. I, 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 no, 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 Mer, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But, hey, you know, thank you very much. Have a great day. But, 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 huh? please. It's my first day on the job. I need to find someone who will trade with me. I just gotta make a trade today. I just gotta make a trade today. I just gotta. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I know someone who can help. I have a friend who has his own restoration company. They could probably use a door that's, you know, vintage. <laughs> Yes. Oh, there you go. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're a lifesaver. Oh. <laughs> Look out, world. Here comes Murray Lohman. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Kellen! How's it going, friend? Not too shabby. You got a Bible story for us today? I do. Our story today comes from the book of John, and it's one of the more famous stories of Jesus in the Bible. Can you guys help me out? Absolutely. Great, because it's time 
for another edition of Human Head Puppet Theater. When Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee, a huge crowd followed him. Oh, don't look now, Jesus, but I'd, I'd say we got company. And by company, I'd say we got one, two, three hundred, four hundred, six hundred, three thousand, four thousand, carry the one. Yeah, yeah, it looks like we got over five thousand people who followed us. Easy. Jesus said to Philip, where can we buy bread for these people to eat? <laughs> A good one, Jesus. Where can we buy bread for all these people? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Uh, oh, you you are serious. Uh, okay, uh, I mean, Jesus, listen, suppose Suppose we bought enough bread to, to give all of these people at least one bite, just one single bite of food. Just suppose we did that. That would take like half a year's pay. I, I don't know who the budget guy is, but I'm sorry. I don't think we can swing that. Jesus already knew what he was going to do before he asked Philip. He just wanted to see what Philip would say. It's hard sometimes to believe something can happen when it seems impossible. Now, another disciple, Andrew, he spoke up. Uh, 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 Jesus, it's me, Andrew. Uh, we found this kid. Hey, Jesus. Uh, he has five barley loaves and two fish. <laughs> you can have them. Yeah. If it'll help. Oh, I, I just don't know how far this will go with a crowd this size. <laughs> Jesus then told the disciples to have the crowd sit down. When they did, Jesus took the bread he gave thanks for it, and he started handing it out. And then he took the fish, gave thanks, and started handing it out as well. And that's when something amazing happened. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So just pass this around. Okay. Bread? Oh. Mmm. Mm. This is good. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, would you like some? Well, somewhat. Oh, yes, don't mind if I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Fish? Here you go. Ooh. Bread and fish. Do you have any more, Jesus? Wow. Whoa. Is this all the food I brought? Yeah. Well, do you want any more? Oh, no. I'm full. Wow. Uh, he said he's full. Jesus had just done the impossible. He had taken a small amount of food that a young child was willing to share, gave thanks, and then somehow over 5,000 people had enough to eat. And check this. After that, Jesus told the disciples to gather up all the food that was left. There were 12 baskets of food left over. Wow. I got to pack my lunch more often. The end. Man, what an amazing story. It is. There was a kid that didn't have much, but he offered what he had. And Jesus was able to take that small gift and feed a giant crowd of people. Good stuff, Kellen. Thanks. No doubt. I'll see you guys next time. You know, if I'm honest, I sometimes feel like Philip. If a problem seems too big, I feel like it can't be fixed. Yeah, me too. But... That kid used what he had to help others and trusted God to do the rest. Yeah. yeah. And we all have something we can use. Yeah, indeed. In fact, reveal the question. Yeah. What do you have that you can use to help others? It may seem like you don't have a lot, but you don't need a lot to help others. Mm -hmm. You can give someone your time. Mm -hmm. Maybe a grandparent needs someone to spend time with them. Or maybe you can help by standing up for someone who's being picked on or treated unfairly. Yeah, you can give clothes or toys away to kids who don't have as much as you. Yeah, lots of things. Yeah, so talk about it with each other. What do you have that you can use to help others? Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time and hanging out with us. And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Yes, we will. See ya! The compassion of Jesus was evident to all as he provided for them. This act of compassion allowed them to stay and hear Jesus' teachings, 
rather than have to leave and go to town to search for food. I'm guessing that at your age, it can be easy to think that you don't have much to offer to help others. It may be tempting to just say, I'll help others later when I have more. But imagine if the boy in the story had thought the same way. There are so many ways that God can take what small amount we have to offer to do something pretty amazing with it. You don't have to wait until you're older to help others. So what do you have that you can use to help others? Think about what you have, your talents or gifts, anything, really. What you have might not feel like a lot, but just imagine what God could do with what you have to offer. What do you have that you can use to help others? Let's ask God to help us with that right now. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for this story. God, I pray that you would show to us what we have that we can use to help others and that we would have compassion to help others, the people around us, the people in our neighborhoods, that you would help us to use the things that we have for them. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you later.